you know, it's really simple. Um, our job is to connect people responsibly to a place to live. And we do that in a variety of different ways. Um, we do it sometimes with a unit itself and, and other times with assistance or support. So there's some programmatic um, uh, support that goes in, into it. FSS is unique, uh, I think, the world over because it takes it a few steps further. The Family Self-Sufficiency Program was approved by Congress in 1990. We began our program in 93, and so this is our 20th anniversary, and we're very happy about that. And it is a welfare-to-work kind of program. So what we do is we have people who are in subsidized housing. They have to mostly be single parents, and they come to us voluntarily to get help. All they have to do is uh, let us know that they're interested, and then we will be sure that they're eligible. They have to be in either public housing or the Section 8 voucher program. Here they are coming into FSS saying, I need more. I want to do more, but I don't know how I can do it. I need your help, and that's what we do. I was already a HOC participant, had received a flyer in the mail um, to talk about this program, FSS. I work very closely with my counselor, Miss Whitfield. I love her to death. <laughs> um, she was wonderful, you know, making sure that I had everything that I need, staying in contact with me. And hopefully, as with the Family Self-Sufficiency Program, when they enroll voluntarily, they're doing that because they're motivated to get help. For me, I was already self-driven. She didn't have to do a lot with me, but just the point of the fact that we would meet for lunch, we would talk about, you know, where I was in my program, where I was in my goals. And so we are able to move them forward, move them up, and really help them to do better financially. And we recognize that, that you know, communities consist of people and everybody has a story. My three goals for the program was to clean up my credit, enroll in a graduate course, and to purchase my home. Which you did. Which I did. I was interested in becoming more financially independent and gaining stable employment. The case managers are there to help them with the resources, but also to help them not to give up. Because here they are struggling to survive, barely making any money at all. I had a lot of struggles. Um, a lot of people in the program are single parents. And you have a lot of challenges, working two and three jobs, um, trying to go to school and get your education if you don't have it. The case manager's focus is also is to help them to hope, to believe in themselves. The most important thing is that we don't do it for them, we help empower them to do it. Uh, the beauty of, our, of FSS, and in particular the team here at HOC, is that they take those stories and make them come alive and give folks possibilities. We help them to stay focused, we help them to manage all the other stuff going on and see that they can do better and keep them moving. I don't know, maybe the job wasn't enough to make her income go up. I'm a family self-sufficiency case manager, and what it means is that I have a caseload of families that I'm responsible for. So as a case manager, when we first meet them, we design like a contract, and it's a five-year contract. We're offering to them, it's our job as case managers to just set up the meeting. You know, you've tried it your way, why not try it our way? And we basically, as case managers, we meet clients where they are and we discuss where they'd like to be in five years as it relates to employment, education, and those kind of things, career. And we basically match clients up with community resources. In many cases, we're cheerleaders, supporters, encouragers. She just gave me lots of you know, words of encouragement and came by and saw the kids and made sure they were okay. And being able to meet with my counselor once a month and talk about my goals. My short-term goals, my long-term goals, and, um, and they changed every six months. Well, she stayed on me to make sure I was working toward my goals, so that really helped me every month meeting with her.
with the case managers always pushing that because you know sometimes you put pu push that aside and you procrastinate but when you when you're forced to actually look at it and write about it and think about it um, it helps you learn who you really are I've been volunteering for about five years now and I've had three different participants in the program culinary school I'm so happy for you Thanks and each of them have had their own goals that they've needed to work on to achieve self-sufficiency. Sometimes self-sufficiency means um, becoming a citizen. I've helped moms to work towards getting their bachelor's degree. I've helped them to find jobs, um, even working with their children to be more active in their children's um, education in school. I'm a volunteer tutor and uh, I guess my specialty is math. And I typically work with adults that are trying to get a GED degree or people that are taking college classes. So I, I see my job as first help them pass, pass the class, because I know math is not their primary interest. If I can somehow help them enjoy math a little more, that's nice, or get over some math anxiety, that's great. We uh, I like to tell people about the math. The reward for me is I always, when I see people working full-time, raising families, and trying to add on this math knowledge. And when I hear that somebody passed their math class, wow, that's, that's wonderful. And then the final, if they can graduate the program, and I was one little part of that, I think those are the, those are the rewards. It's just, you know, participating, um, volunteering in the community, I think everybody should um, do what they can to make a positive um, contribution to society. And that's really what FSS does. It provides the possibilities that, that take a family beyond just stabilization um, and, and often uh, give them that, that hope, that window of light that you wouldn't ordinarily see just in the process of connecting someone to a place to live. Uh, we have had over 800 graduates, and of those, 16% have bought homes at the time of graduation. This is the first time I have seen your house. I'm so happy that you finally got yes, to see I it. Know. It is beautiful. Thank you. I said, we have a house. <laughs> so this is my foyer, and I heard four bedroom, Clarksburg garage. Um, this is... Uh, my living room, and I was like, I'll take it, and I never even saw it at first. I feel like it's my home now. It's a Absolutely. It's yours. Absolutely. You paid for yes. it. Yes. You are paying for yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Housing is such a very basic human need, and, you know, especially when children are involved. I have three beautiful children. I have a son who's 20 and a daughter named Ayana and little Miss Gabriella, she runs the house. <laughs> this is my daughter Tajane. I have two other daughters. Well, this is my room. Yeah. Wow, you have your own place. I like it a lot more than the apartment. The apartment was really cramped up and um, especially as me and my sisters as growing teenagers, it was really like it got really small in the apartment. <laughs> so when my mom told me that um, we were moving, I was really excited because I was like, yes, I get to have my own room. We got to move closer to the schools that we were going to. We actually live walking distance to the Rocky Hill Middle School and Clarksburg High School. So that was ideal as a single mother um, for them to be involved in after school activities. So they can walk to school or they can come home from school. Single moms and single household parents they need to really establish a secure housing environment for themselves and for their children so they can really focus on other things and be able to get up and go to work every day. I'm very involved with my children's lives and I can see when uh, uh, when they come home and make sure they do their homework and so this is ideal for me it's perfect. Being able to purchase my own home 
you know, that's a great lineage to leave to my children. Having their own home gives them roots and foundation to say, hey, this is where I grew up with, you know, the sense of uh, stability, knowing that if things don't work out there, I always have a place to come back to, to call home. So those are the things that I've learned in FSS that I can pass along to my children. Across the, the board of our graduates, we more than double their earnings. And also they have a wonderful savings account. This is my kitchen. And the average escrow savings of, of our graduates is over $10,000. So that helps them. Can you kind of explain how your escrow savings accrued in FSS? What did you have to do to have some wonderful savings that helped you buy the home? Five years of growth and changing jobs and getting better jobs and better pay. More of the money that I was uh, paying towards the rent of HOC, um, more of it was going into escrow. Well, everybody has a turtle and a frog in their garden. So um, at the end of five years, um, I actually had a good sustainable amount to help me with the closing costs and, and um, buying the house and furnishing the house. And um, it was just an amazing um, transition and it made it so much easier. This is my, uh, my home office for right now. And I also work at home. I'm a medical coder. It's administrative health care, but I do the coding from home. It's so rewarding to me because I've been able to see them achieve their goals. Well, when I first entered the FSS program, I was an unemployed single parent. Um, I didn't have many job skills. Since I've been in the program, I was able to maintain employment with a government agency. And when they achieve one goal, sometimes we set more goals for them. I'm now taking part-time classes at UMUC. To even make them stronger and more self-sufficient. I just want people to know the opportunities that Montgomery County has for the the, the people that are motivated, that want to get motivated. I want people to know about the resources that Montgomery County has, and FSS is definitely one of those things that can make it easier, that links you to all your questions. You get a bunch of resources. I would have never known any of this if it hadn't been for FSS, actually, because they connected me to these resources, and I had great a great support system. Nancy, my caseworkers, and um, just it just felt like a sense of community and actually that's why it's called the family self-sufficiency because I'm pretty sufficient now. Well it gave me higher self-esteem I didn't even imagine I was able to be employed for five years and also attend school part-time. Talking to my counselor she gave me the resources to be able to accomplish my goals so that was something that I didn't think I was able to do, and it was a, a good accomplishment, a big accomplishment of mine. We've got not just the, the stories of the past, but we've got the stories of the future. So we don't have just a mom or a dad um, that, are, that are potentially set to prosper. And you're not just helping somebody today, you're helping generations to come. The children, the grandchildren, and even the nieces, nephews, and, and so forth. And so it's, it's the seed. Um, it, it really is.